Welcome everybody to this edition of Attention Talk Video. I'm your host, ADHD and Attention Coach, Jeff Copper. And we're here today to talk about emotions. Uh, many, many years ago, back in 2011, I interviewed Dr. Russell Barkley. At the time, he was, um, he was going around talking to people about ADHD as an executive functioning issue, largely um, of which is a self-regulation problem. And as I began to listen to him, so much uh, really made a lot of sense. It forever changed the way that I coach. Um, in the interview that we had talked to him, we, he talked about the notion of what self-regulation is and that with ADHD, there's things that you need to regulate, like your attention, which we all know. But what was earth-shattering to me is the notion that we have to regulate our emotions, and that can be very problematic for those with ADHD. Uh, they can get really upset. This can impact relationships, at situations at work, etc. And over the years, this has been interesting because some I coach with ADHD, I focus really on the attention side. Others, it's really more about the emotion side. For those that are combined, it's still emotion-based because if I can help them understand how to pay attention to things, the emotions often get in the way, and as I've learned, when you're very, very emotional, you can't even remember what works. And so, what I wanted to do was, uh, in an interview that I did with him years ago, he defined an emotion in a different, um, as a process. It happens very, very quickly. Uh, there's really kind of two processes. The first level all animals have, and the second level is more about human beings. And we're going to roll the tape here in a second of a little excerpt that I did with it, but I want you to focus in on the second level and the ability to be self-aware and override emotions. And what I want to do is I want to, to share this, this, this very bright, intelligent individual who I think is probably one of the, the brightest minds in ADHD. And then after we're going to talk about this because the ability to pause and use the executive functioning brain to inhibit or override the automatic brain is exceptionally effort and very difficult to coach. Um, it's doable, um, not afraid of it, do it all the time, but it is, it is really kind of fascinating. So let's roll the tape on really what is an emotion and we'll come back and we'll talk about it. Dr. Barkley, start at the beginning. What is an emotion? Uh, yes, well, I, you know, I'm glad to ask about this uh, this whole topic, Jeff, because as you know, uh, emotion has been ignored in our view of ADHD now for some time. But to begin with, an emotion is a, a very short-term change in the state of our body and of our mind, and it's usually comprised of about three things that interact with each other. One is simply our level of arousal. We experience a change in our heart rate and our blood pressure and our breathing. Uh, so that, that we, we find ourselves in a more active state than we were, say, just a few seconds or a few minutes ago. But mm -hmm. besides that kind of physiological arousal, there's also an evaluative part of an emotion, which has to do with our evaluating whether what has just happened is either threatening or reinforcing to us. And that evaluative part of the emotion then leads to a change in our behavior, whether or not we pursue an approach what it is that we found interesting or rewarding, or whether we withdraw from something that we find uh, threatening uh, to us. So uh, it's those three gradients that form what we report as feeling that we have an emotion. But they're very, very important for human survival because they rapidly evaluate what is happening around us and cause us to pay attention to them and then change our behavior as a function of that paying attention. So you could basically break down any emotional experience into four stages and they can happen within a matter of milliseconds but it mm -hmm. separate them because later we're going to talk about how you might be able to alter your problems with emotion and uh, problems with regulating these emotional states so these four steps are first of all there's a situation an event that happens to us uh -huh. that's immediately followed by what you've already mentioned and that is you've paid attention to it so there's uh -huh. an attention component to emotion besides the situational part of it. The third thing is that you appraise it, you evaluate it, you've thought about it in some way. And then finally, you react, and that's the emotional reaction that you experience. But those four steps, the situation, the attention, the evaluation, and then the response or the reaction can be split apart. And it really helps in managing your emotions to think of it as a four-step process because it's through those four steps that we're going to try to get a handle on this. So this is fascinating to me. So it, it, it's, I mean, this is all almost instantaneous, but you, you're in a situation, you pay attention to it, you kind of appraise what's kind of going on, and you react to, what you, react to it or what you think you should do as a result of it, which I'm hearing manifests in behavior. 
Yes, that's, that's right. Now, that's how emotions play out in everybody, including non-human species. It's not just humans that have emotions. Those four things happen. What humans have is there is a second layer to this whole system in which we are monitoring ourselves because humans have self-consciousness, self-awareness. Mm-hmm. And so we're monitoring these emotions as they play out, and that second level gives us the ability to step in to that automatic first level that I just described and be able to do something about those emotions. No other species can do that because no other species is self-aware to the extent that we are, and therefore we can self-manage these emotions if we choose to. Uh, And so there's a second higher level to our emotions, and it's also comprised of a four-step process. The first is simply the ability to inhibit the automatic level, this Mm -hmm. automatic reaction to events. So that instead of just allowing ourselves to be at the mercy of our environment and our feelings, humans have the ability to actually intervene. And the first thing they do to intervene is they stop. They Uh inhibit the strong emotional behavior and reaction. And then the second thing they do is they try to calm themselves down. They self-soothe, self-calm, and otherwise try to down-regulate this sort of strong emotion that's overtaken them. The third thing they do, as befits your show, by the way, is they refocus their attention away from the event itself. They may distract themselves, they may look away, they may close their eyes or even cover their eyes if it's a very powerful event, but in some way they're going to divert their attention away from that stimulating event. And then finally, they're going to organize a new emotion, a new experience to replace the old one. And this new emotion they're going to generate is going to be much more consistent with their long-term goals, their welfare, what they hope to achieve. And if I could uh, just have a moment, I'll give you an example. If you and I are in a business meeting and I said something to you that was humiliating or insulting, if you didn't have this second level of emotional self-control, you might automatically leap across the desk and begin to throttle me because I've humiliated you in front of our peers. But you do have this ability, and so what you might do is even though this reaction is building in you, you will go through these four steps that we've talked about. You'll inhibit that initial urge to come over across the table and throttle me. Then you're going to start to talk to yourself and calm yourself down and watch your breathing. Then maybe you're going to look away from me and think about something else and count to ten and go to your happy place. Mm -hmm. And then finally, that evaluation is going to lead you to substitute a different emotion, one that's more reasonable, because you've evaluated the fact that you don't want to lose your job, you don't want to get arrested for assault, and you you want to be able to keep this this source of employment going, uh, and therefore you're going to substitute a more constructive emotion in its place. Uh, And those are the two steps that we believe ADHD interferes with. It interferes, first of all, with the ability to inhibit that strong emotion, and then secondly, these things we've talked about, as far as self-regulating your emotions. So with, with that being, with us having talked about what an emotion is, what I'm hearing is, is that one of the keys with ADHD is the ability to self-regulate in that emotion? Yes. Well, actually, that's exactly what you're going to see. Because of the impulsiveness that ADHD creates in individuals, they're going to be less able to engage in that first step, which is to stop the emotion from playing out. Their emotions are going to be very impulsive off-the-cuff, raw, unmoderated, thoughtless emotions as they play out. And, you know, that's okay if you're a child. It's forgivable. But as you get older, we expect people to have a more mature management of their emotions. And that's where it starts to get people into trouble because the inability to manage that strong emotion has consequences uh, for your work, for your social relationships, and so on. And then the second thing they find difficult is when the strong emotion has overcome them, doing these other steps we've talked about, self-soothing, self-calming, refocusing their attention, and then appraising the event differently so that they come up with a better emotion in place of the one that they initially were going to show, those are going to be hard for them as well because the emotion is out of the gate. And this is what's really powerful and why I thank you so much for coming on the show is, is, is if we were paying attention to other things, we wouldn't necessarily know emotion. But by saying, hey, listen, emotion is a, real, a big piece of this, and this is what an emotion is, and these are the processes that we go to self-regulate. Knowing what those processes are, to me, is very powerful if you have ADD because you, you, you can feel that emotion in your body. Like, wait a second, pause. Notice that you're going through that. And some of that stuff, it might be as like, I notice, I notice it's coming 
this is a this is a step in the process, and I know that I need to refocus my attention or to to down or to to calm down a little bit. What coaching a lot is about is like, okay, what types of things in the past have enabled you to kind of calm down, and what has allowed you to refocus in those situations? Because if you become conscious of it, then you begin to manage it, which is which is really powerful for me today. Is because if if we if for your case of bringing emotion back, if we pay pay attention to it, it gives us so much more power as working with those with ADHD. Say, wait a second, I feel the emotion kind of coming on. Here's the process I've got to go through, and here's what I need to do to, in order to to manage it and get to where I need to be for a different outcome. Absolutely. Really fascinated what an emotion is um, and how Dr. Barkley really kind of broke it down. As I mentioned before uh, we played the clip, uh, the ability of those with ADHD to kind of pause and notice their emotions and uh, step in to do something about it and override it is uh, is a bit of a challenge. We call it the ability to kind of pause, ponder, and then proceed in a different direction. Um, that phrase is actually coined by uh, uh, David Gwork of the AD Coach Academy. And I really want to emphasize here when you're dealing with emotions, uh, this is very difficult because it's emotional. It's not really logical. It's very difficult to catch yourself um, in the middle of it. Um, if you hear first aid training or Marines training or different things, they all say, first thing you need to do is calm down, don't panic. That's one of the fundamental things about ADHD or, excuse me, emotional self-regulation is to catch yourself in the moment and to do something about it. Again, not an easy thing to do. In general, in coaching, we do a lot of helping people listen to their bodies because when you can feel the anxiety and feel the frustration come in, it often is a trigger to help you become aware of the emotion so that you can actually go do something about it as opposed to let it escalate out of control. Um, the, today's video is really to create an awareness of what's going on. I've got a lot of other videos that deal with emotion uh, in, the, uh, in relationships with uh, Melissa Orlov. Um, I talk out very specifically in my, uh, my video about fight, flight, or freeze on emotion, the ubiquitous process that we all go through. But one of the things that you need to know is in coaching it for years, it always comes down to self-awareness. There's nobody that can do it other than you, and it starts with understanding what emotion is, how to feel it, and be able to catch yourself in the moment and do something about it. Again, it's difficult, but it's very coachable. Hope you've enjoyed this tip. Go watch our other videos related on it. Please subscribe to our channel by hitting the subscribe button, and please leave comments. We always enjoy uh, learning your thoughts on the content that we produce. And with that, we hope you've enjoyed this edition of Attention Talk Video. Take care.